Hello, my name is Willie Keener. I'm doing my research topic over education, language, and identity amongst students at a South African university. The source for the uh, research topic is Gene Parkinson and Allison Crouch. I've always had an interest in the African culture. Um, I, it was always uh, very intriguing to me why people would travel from one continent to another in search of ed education. I've had the privilege of uh, interviewing currently one African student and uh, doing a little bit of research with her along with some other articles that I was researching. <clears throat> Initially, it seemed to me that Africans had taken education more seriously than African Americans and that was one of my um, biggest issues that I had arose over the years in, in going to college, attending college, was how serious the African student was in education and how playful and kind of uh, laissez-faire that the African American student was. So I guess that's a, a pretty good starting premise for, for uh, kind of balancing the scales to find out what uh, really is going on in between African students and African American students. <clears throat> Uh, research shows the importance of education for African students is unrivaled only to the desire, only by the desire to provide for their families back home. And then speaking with Miss um, uh, Sylvia about that, <coughs> I had come to find out that uh, basically that is true. Um, there is a desire for um, African students to come to America for uh, a better education because it's, it holds more value. And um, as far as taking care of their families back home, they really um, believe in that. So the education that they're receiving is uh, more serious because the, the education they receive in America, the money they're using to provide for family back home. <coughs> um, next was the uh, English versus Zulu uh, language. Um, one of the things that came up in the article was Af that Africans were forced to learn the English language as their native identities were becoming more Americanized. Um, this was also true. Uh, I guess it's, it's more or less for them preparation and hope of getting to America so they had to have the American language or the English language uh, introduced to them and basically to a certain extent forced on them so that they would learn it and would be more acclimated to the American system or the English uh, language. Um, <clears throat> in South Africa, the, um, the native language is Zulu, and that's for the largest part of South Africa. However, Missivia is from East Africa, uh, Tanzania, I believe, and with her, she said there were so many different languages, but basically the same structure for education exists across Africa. Um, in Africa now, schools are basically primarily taught in English and um, like I said, that's basically to assist the, the African student and to adapt them into the English language in coming to America. Um, she also said that there was some pressure on them as far as the aspect of them holding on to their native language or the or their mother tongue, and uh, but in the same sense, the educators there, it's not that she said it wasn't that they wanted them to lose their native tongue. They just put so much pressure on them, and it was always consistently and constantly put on them to learn the English the English language. Uh, this creates a class system resulting in less than dominant language in most areas. It also results in a loss of cultural identity in many students, and she did identify with that. And she was basically saying that um, Africa is still Africa, but a lot of it has become Americanized by, by the American culture and in the English language. <coughs> Education is very, very important in Africa as well as other places, but more so in Africa because uh, being, in, being that from her experience, she said it's more like a third world country, it's kind of behind times. So um, they want to basically catch up with times and be more educated to provide better for their families 
and I more or less have the American dream that everyone else in the United States. <clears throat> Education received in a foreign country, mostly English-speaking continents, is more highly valued. I questioned that also, and she confirmed that it was. Um, she stated something in regards to her sister um, working on her master's degree in business, and she said basically in getting a degree in Africa or a foreign country that it's useless unless it has the support or backing from a college uh, in the United States or England or, or a country that speaks English primarily. English and African schools English is preferred as the medium of instruction over Africans, which is rejected as the language of oppression. In grade schools in Africa, students are required to speak English. If a teacher hears a student speaking anything but English, they have the right to punish them. This was a question that I really had for her also. Um, I wanted to know to what extent would the punishment be, and she said it would go from a verbal reprimand to um, a counseling pulled to the side, notifying parents to an actual beating if necessary to make them adhere to what was being uh, told to them. And uh, she said if they uh, continue to disobey uh, the informed headmaster about, they would inform the headmaster about the behavior and it's basically up to the headmaster to decide the next punishment. This is a way of preparing students for the future in their eyes. English means smart, rich, and respected and that is looked at heavily in the African culture. She uh, said uh, growing up at a young age in Africa that most of the students were being led in a certain way to do certain things but upon coming to America and getting into the American school system that things were absolutely different and she said the educators or the headmasters or whomever were doing the education in Africa were not correct on the way that they were doing things and teaching them and she said that they were even further behind than um, it would normally be looked at coming from a foreign country because she basically said it was the blind leading the blind someone who really didn't know or understand what they were teaching but enforcing it in a way that the student had to learn a certain way and once they got here it was completely different and uh, it basically states the mother tongue learners and teachers dominate the classroom. Lack of progress and growth of English in schools. Um, little reading and writing because the learners are of low English profi uh, proficiency. Uh, teachers fail to use textbooks, which limits learning for students. So not only were their English knowledge and skills very low, they didn't have the textbooks to support what they were teaching. In conclusion, um, basically, the whole African experience is is, is marvelous to me. It's, it's it's wonderful to get to know people from a, a a foreign country, and being that I'm an African American, that gives me some sense of where I came from and the blessings that I have before me with being an African American in the United States. Um, with the topics that had. Uh, come with the uh, African students, with them uh, getting here and um, just being able to function is, is great to me. And as my interview process continues, I'll consult with counselors uh, from different universities and ju junior colleges that uh, have a large influx of African students, along with hopefully being able to speak with other African students and kind of see what their experiences are. Um, Basically, um, this has been uh, a very enriching project for me, and it allowed me to really get a better understanding on something that I always had a great interest in. I'd like to thank you, and at this time, I'm closing, and I will finish this project and have a lot more information in regards to my topic. Thank you.